This is Lake Valley, a city I left abandoned for 2,706 days before coming out of hibernation to take bulldozers to large swaths of the city. And though some residents of Lake Valley live in fear of their mayor, most are happy about the fancy new infrastructure, the improved traffic flow, improved city services, and the newfound respect of the topography. One thing that everyone can agree about, though, is that going from two airports to none hasn't been great for the community. So today we're going to resolve that by adding a small airport using the airport's DLC, something that wasn't available back in 2015 when the city was originally created. We're also going to add cargo to the airport and rethink this broken little industrial area. And this area is very constrained, so we're going to have to take a few liberties, filling in large swaths of the ocean to make enough space for our airport runways. And if you like designing custom airports, hit the like button. Or if you prefer the pre-built ones, hit the like button for that too and let me know what you prefer in the comments. Or just drop an airplane emoji. Either way, it's engagement and helps increase the reach of the video and I would greatly appreciate it. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Before we get building today, I wanted to address the elephant in the room. The poll that I put on the community tab a few weeks ago asking you all what we should do next. Now, 16,000 of you participated in that, which is a mind-blowing number, and I want to thank you all for that. And then I apologize to you for turning against what you said you wanted, the whole city transit build. Now, the reason why I'm thinking that we shouldn't do that right now is this comment from Dominic, who suggested that it wouldn't it make more sense to work on transit after we're done working on our population and other build changes, such as our downtown and this airport. And I agree with that because the downtown is going to have a bunch of transit as is our airport, and I don't want to have to redo the transit network twice. That kind of defeats the purpose of a whole city transit build. So we are going to work on these two builds first. We're going to start with the airport since it's probably the biggest missing feature of our community, and then we'll adjust our downtown. So let's just dive into the build. We're going to work on that, and then after these two builds, we will do our whole city transit fix. To begin, let's talk a little bit about the game plan for today. We're going to be building a custom airports DLC airport on the peninsula where our old airport was located. However, we're going to be using the airports DLC, which means that this will be a very large airport in comparison to our old airport and our old harbor that was over here. So we're not going to worry about a harbor. We are going to worry about a cargo airport. So that's how we'll get some of our goods into the community. And we are going to bring our cargo rail over here as well because we're going to be relocating this facility. We're going to need to think about how we get here from the interstate as well. And I'm thinking that we can't have an interchange like we had in the past. We've got to use this interchange to feed into our airport. So that means that we're going to be very disruptive to this area, which honestly, I'm OK with. Imagine a semi going up here. Not so good. <laughs> Not so good at all. So we're going to really rethink this area and we're going to decal the sacket because right now it is a gigantic cul-de-sac. There's no way out of here. We're going to start out by eliminating some things around here. And we're going to do this so that we can create the access to our new airport. I think that we're going to need to turn this and kind of meander down here to get to this side of the peninsula. And that's the only way we're going to get a reasonable grade. Now, I'm calling reasonable grade between five and six percent because I don't know that we can do any better. So to begin, I want to start building a road over to the new airport. I'm just going to send this over a few units and then we're going to curve this around a nice 90 and then we'll end up sending this down this way. What I'm thinking is we'll come right about here and cut across our contours. And then I want to have a nice road paralleling the end of our little peninsula. Now I want to go into the unified UI network multi-tool and we're going to go into our create connection mode and we're just going to line these up. And the nice thing about this is I can choose where I'm cutting across the terrain Hit enter there and we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Now I'm going to bump everything down to ground level. So I'm just going in here. I have anarchy on and I set this to ground level and I'm going to upgrade the segments that are bridges. And now I want to use the set slope mode to really focus on our slopes. We'll go through here and just start selecting nodes. I'm going to continue around here to figure out exactly where I need to be. Seven, that's one more node and I should be at, oh, a little higher than I wanted to be. Now this is six exactly. Not perfect. What I think I'm going to do is grab this one and bump it up and slope here. And now we're at five and a half. So I care about this because this is going to be where I connect in a frontage road and where we make connections to our old industrial area. 
But we'll worry about that in just a moment. But for now, I want to make sure that our slope down to here is good. And the way that we're going to do this, is just start selecting nodes, hit enter until you get to less than 6%. And there we are. 5.9. That stinks. <laughs> but I think it's going to do the trick for us. So let's talk a little bit about this frontage road and why I'm building it. I just talked about it a bit. I'm thinking that I don't want folks in this neighborhood to be forced onto the highway to get to the airport. So we're going to build a connection likely right here and have a highway frontage road and save this interchange for people who are coming on regional trips from this direction or this neighborhood here who have no choice but to come through here right now. So I'm going to use the parallel road tool and parallel a bit of this road. And then we're going to use the exact same create connection mode to make this lovely connection right here. And now I'll slope this all the way to here and we have a nice 1.4% grade. So now we have a significant portion of the roadway network that we're going to have through here, but we've got to really think about this area and our lumpies and bumpies and how we make this work. First of all, let's dezone this whole thing. I don't want this to neck out here. We're going to get rid of this. And truthfully, we might do something here anyway with our cargo network to separate the two. This is definitely the passenger route, and I do want there to be some sort of connection that is dedicated to cargo. So we'll have to see. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Now I want to go into our slope mode and this is not going to be the most realistic thing ever, but we're just going to start selecting nodes and flattening things out. And you start to see that we can get some decent grades if only we try. <laughs> and then there are things like this where this road made sense when we had this coming through here, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to change the grade of this pretty significantly and tunnel. So I'm not going to worry about maintaining this gap here. Instead, I want to make a connection and have continuity of our roadway network. And through here, I am thinking that we should get rid of some of these roads and simplify the roadway network. That's something, especially in an industrial area, that's just so important to do. We've also got two fire stations, which doesn't make a ton of sense. I'm just going to choose this one. I'm going to add a node there so that I can gentle up this turn and then we'll send this right across. Pretty boring roadway network, but it is an industrial area. Like I mentioned, it doesn't need to be fancy. That's not the goal of an industrial area. So this will do the trick for us. Wow, <laughs> that's terrible. There we go. And, I, you know, you could ask yourself, is this is this even worth it having this here? If I were developing this new, I would probably say no. I don't know that we need to have this little industrial site here, but because we've already done it, we'll try to maintain the land uses that we had in the past. But we do need to make a connection into this residential area, which might seem a little strange. But here's the thing. The industrial area needs employees and employees need a reasonable way to get to work. And right now they must go through this interchange. So we're going to say that this little neighborhood right here is the employment base for our new industrial area. I'm going to level the terrain underneath here because we're going to go right underneath this bridge. This seems like a rational height. And then you're going to have to use a little bit of eminent domain right here, unfortunately. And then we'll slope right mouse click at their top height left at the lower and slope right up. And now we'll have a nice, gentle, pre-graded roadway connection. And if we want to do this the simplest way possible, we'll again go into our create connection mode. I'm going to be the biggest proponent of this forever now because it's so great. I, I particularly like it in instances like this where we've got challenging terrain and you can really play with this to get it exactly where you want it to be. And now one more check of our slope, 3.9 there. And on this side, oh, we are looking absolutely wonderful now. So this is the kind of connection that was really missing over here. And it's going to be a real boon to this entire area. A wise man once said, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. And, uh, I did not listen because that's all I'm doing right now is coming through and, and doing a lot of things that are totally unnecessary and in some cases breaking what I am actually intending to do. That said, if you play with it long enough, it might look good. So you never know. 
We're gonna uh, turn these into some industrial roads too. The maintenance is halved. The, it's a little bit louder, but who cares? It's an industrial area. In reality, we're looking at concrete versus asphalt, which means that we don't have rutting, and that is exactly why you would want to do this here. And then as we approach our bridge, we will let that asphalt remain. It'll be a little bit quieter. So there we go. That is looking very, very good. I do want to improve this interchange. We uh, did a couple of things that I'm not proud of. We bridged up here when this would really probably be cut and fill. So we are going to ground level these. They're going to look a little bit wonky. So we'll need to play with this to make it work. And there we go. Nothing too serious. Just backing this out a little ways made it look really, really good. So now I want to go through and figure out some of these slopes. So we're just going to feather this out a bit. Just take the brush strength way, way down, take the brush size way, way up and just smooth this out. And there's my Midwesternness coming out. That's what we love to do. We make things nice and smooth. And lastly, I want to upgrade this to a two lane highway and we're likely going to go through at the end and think about turn lanes because I think as soon as we upgrade this, we're going to start to see some traffic. It's going to get crazy. So now that we have this, oh, look at that. We are going way up there. I do not like that at all. Let's grab this control H this down and we'll figure out our slopes from there because that is no good. All right, we are good there, and now we're gonna do the highway down here as well. Now, we need to create an airport district. And again, this is a self-leveling district, so we've gotta be really careful, particularly where, where, where we've done this, because it will look super jank if we uh, aren't really careful. And we'll have to see exactly where this needs to be, but for the time being, this is a good improvement. And right off the bat, I'm fairly certain that I want to use a pretty minimal airport. I don't want to go with anything that looks like this, the classic style, which to me feels a little a little drab. And I don't want to go ultra modern because that doesn't really fit the character of a Lake Valley. So we'll go with the modern style, which truthfully is my favorite of the vanilla styles. And we're just going to place that somewhere for now. I'm thinking we have some sort of drop off loop right out front and then we have parking off to the side here and then we will have our terminal extend back and maybe loop around so we have our aircraft stands back here and you can already see where I'm intending to put the runway on this end we're going to put our cargo so we'll have to think about how we run another road alongside along with our rail and I want to have a bus terminal next to this as well so to begin we'll set we'll this up maybe Five, and then we will loop this over. So nothing all that fancy here. And then this is going to be important because this is where we're going to send our parking lots. So we're just going to come over here. We're going to have our expensive parking, our structured parking right here. And then we're going to have a lot for uh, some of the cheaper parking stalls right here. And then I'm just going to use the curved road tool. We'll find our road guideline and curve that right in. And while we're thinking about it, let's place our structured airport parking right off the bat. So I'm just going to place that right here. So if you are parking in the expensive structured parking, you get to be a little bit closer. If you want to go and walk a little ways, well, you can do that, too. We've got these small decorative parking lots, which will be the economy parking. There we go. And you might wonder why I'm using these small ones. I just like the control that you have with the small ones. Now, I want to extend this off and wrap it around here. So let's go back into our airports and we'll grab our concourse. We'll send this down a little ways. And then I'm going to do something a little bit unconventional. We're going to go back into our parallel road tool. And I'm going to select this road. And then we can just grab our height like this and I'm going to plus this over and these are a network so you can do whatever you want with them. Looking absolutely beautiful, except for that, that corruption right there. That's not so beautiful. I think that's an extra node. Difficult to see, but you can see that we've got two nodes very close to one another here. I'll just get rid of one of those and it'll clean everything up. And then I'm going to pull this over here as well. Not 100% sure how far yet, but I'm going to know in just a second because I want to have a bus terminal here. So we're going to place this bus terminal right here. Now I want to use a create connection mode to make a connection between these two roads. Obviously, right now it looks a little crazy, but all we've got to do 
is ensure that we don't have too many nodes here. We do. We have one extra node there. And then we go in to move it and pull this down. And you can see it fixed it right off the bat. And now I want to think about our cargo network generally because we're going to need to fit all of this in. This is going to be our cargo road where we have all of the cargo going to our cargo facility down here. And then we're going to also have rail. Now for a rail, I want to maintain a 1.5% grade or less. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, we're going to struggle with that and it's going to be okay. It's rail and I'm not good at it. And you just got to keep trying someday. I'll get good at it. Maybe city skylines too in eight years. I don't know, but I'm going to keep trying because I'm never giving up. Now I want to think about how we get back up here because I want to have that cargo road connecting up. So for this one, we're going to send the road back. I'm going to use a road guideline so that I can mirror what we've been up to. And now I'll send this right about here. And then again with Anarchy on, we're going to create this connection, make that as sweeping as we can and enter that right in. And then we can bridge across here. And I really like the way this is turning out already. What we're going to need to do, though, is adjust our terrain heights, which is another reason why I want to think about this right off the bat. That seems better. It seems like a truck could fit underneath there and we can worry about the grades now from these outer locations. 2.7 just fine. So now we need to find another path up here. And what I'm thinking is we take this broken node here and we run a highway from this location. OK, so what I decided to do here was focus on this connection being made from our industrial area. So I, I basically want to be able to get the goods here and somehow get it into our industrial area and back and forth without going through the passenger network. So hopefully we can make the slopes make sense here. Again, we want to be sub 6% if at all possible. And it looks like we got to 5.9. And now I want to think about our rail in this area. So I'm going to start out with everything being at ground level and we will bury it afterwards. I find that to be a useful way of building these sorts of networks. So basically, I'm going to connect this to here. Again, we're going to use our trusty create connection mode. This could be good. I am very curious about the slopes, though. We're at 4% right now. That's way too high. So the way that we're going to resolve this is I'm going to grab this control H this to maybe right here. And I'm going to see if this improves things. There's going to be a bit of guessing and checking to get this to be right. So that's actually way too low. After a couple of adjustments here, raising this note up and sloping back to here, we got to 1.5%. Now, this is no magic number. I think that that's a good number for cargo rail. But the reason I didn't want to go any lower is because we've got to figure out the other side, too. And <laughs> we've got some challenges. 46.9%. <laughs> now we're at three and a half. I'm guessing if I go out to here, that fixes it. Yeah, 3.5. And while we're out here, no, no, I, sh I shouldn't. Part of me wants to, to fix all the way out to here, but it gets pretty wild. I did it. It's probably really stupid, but I did it. <laughs> and if we're going to do that, we've kind of got to go all the way. There we go. 3.5. It looks super janky out here. I am going to attempt to fix that. So the way that we'll do that is we're going to take a real small brush, take the brush strength way, way down. We'll right mouse click over here and then left over here where we're going to slope to and then follow our train track. And there we go. And if we pop in here, there's a lot of fog, but it's OK. It's OK. <laughs> it's OK. We're going to we're going to step away. We're going to need to do even more of that over here, though, where it is visible. So we will again go into our slope terrain tool. We will make it a little bit bigger this time because I do want there to be a bit of an overhang. So we'll right mouse click over here and come all the way back to here. And this will be where we slope from. Now, when you're using this tool, let's say you let go, it's OK. It'll still remember where you started and where you ended until you right mouse click again. And then I like to back it away just a bit from the track so it doesn't seem like folks could stick their hand out the window of the train and scrape it on the rocks. <laughs> I just want to remove trees from the track 
And there we go. Now for this segment, we're just going to come back through here with Anarchy on. We'll drop this to underground and just start upgrading these segments and they'll look crazy, but they'll bury themselves eventually as you upgrade through here. And that's probably pretty good. So I think that what we're going to do here is pop this up from a tunnel directly to a bridge and that might make things look a little bit more reasonable. I think it does. That looks pretty good. And over here, we're going to probably need to play with our nodes to make this work. So for this, we'll happen to move it. We're underground already, which is great because we're going to need to take this node and this needs to be, we'll hold down alt. We need this to be right about here. And then going back to normal ground level, we'll need to move this one right here. Alt for this. And there we go. It's not going to be perfect, but it's perfectly fine. If it's a little lumpy and bumpy and crazy, you can always go into node controller and slope things out. And then, of course, we could hit this up one last time with our set slope mode just to make sure that things are exactly as they should be. Already looks like it's 1.5, but we got a bump there and now we're good. We've got all of our networks over here, which was the game plan. So now we've got to finish our airport. So to begin, I'm going to Think about our highway here. So we'll extend that along here and the same thing here. Although this is probably going to be a one way. So I'm thinking that this is a loop around here, although right here. Oh, actually, this can't be because I want transit to be able to head in here. So let's go ahead and use our asymmetric roads through here. So we'll have two roads heading out. So you'd have that looping accent if you want. And then we're going to use our bus roads and I'm just upgrading this. Now we're going to use our network multi tool to unlock these. And I want to upgrade this to again, be a bus only road. We're going to use our asymmetric road right here again. And that's because we want two lanes going in one going out two, so that you could go around here if you wanted to. And then again, we've got to be able to reach our parking facility. We're going to unlock this and relock this before I forget about it. And we're going to upgrade these roads right here. And then I want to add that crossing. So into node controller, set this to crossing, and then we lock those again so we don't inadvertently break the asset. Here we're going to add in another. I think we're going to use a grass line street here so we don't have the trees conflicting. And then I want to make sure that you could cross the road here. So we're just going to add some crosswalks. So that's looking good. So now that we have this, let's start thinking about our aircraft stands and I want to have a little bit of everything. So for our small ones, let's add those over here. We'll think of this as our local service, our regional service, and then we'll have some of our medium stands, which will be some of our longer distance service. And then we'll have just a couple of these larger stands. And maybe, you know, I actually think that we have too many of our mediums. We'll take this down to three and then I'm going to turn this right here. And I want to add in an aircraft control tower at the end. Now, obviously, it won't let me do this naturally, but we have move it at our disposal. So that means that we can grab this, hold down alt so it moves nicely. And then I'll just slide this right in. You know, it's funny. There are these rivets in the ceiling and it almost seems as if you're supposed to be able to place this there because it just fits so well. So now I want to think a bit about our runway. I'm going to begin with our taxiway. So I'm going to run that right here. And now I know that we have to extend this out. All right. So now I want to think about the way that this uh, runway would face. So I think logically you'd have it come in this way. I'd be concerned <laughs> that the airplanes clip this mountain and there's nothing I can do about it. So we'll do that. Well, that means that our runways or our taxiway may even be in the right direction. I'm going to run this all the way down for the sake of guidelines. And then we'll come here, grab onto this guideline and pull this all the way down. Now the nodes are really wonky on the airports. You can see I'm struggling already. Thankfully we have anarchy, which means we can do whatever we want and force connections like this one. I'm going to get rid of that node and then I'm going to do something that I'm not sure if you've tried this, but you're able to grab that runway right there, which is one that you should not be able to grab and then just directly connect up. That is a bi-directional runway. So 
we're going to see how this works for us. Truthfully, we will use the directionality of these, but I think for some of these ones, I just want to pull in straight back. So there's lots of crazy nodes through here. So I want to delete all of those nodes. It'll clean things up, make it look better and ensure that our airplanes don't screw up. The other place we're going to have these nodes are right here. Now I want this little segment of bi-directional runway to operate like it's part of this taxi stand. And the way that you do that is to get rid of these nodes. And I want to get some power going to this area just so we can make sure that things are working right and we'll troubleshoot if we have to. Let's just start our zoning over here, considering we know we're gonna have this anyway. And we'll keep this fairly sparse through here. We don't need to zone every square inch of this. We can leave some gaps and we don't need to go right along the side here. That is quite the drop off. What we will do while, waiting, while we are waiting for this to zone in is add in a bit of fencing so that folks aren't diving off here. <laughs> that would be pretty, pretty terrifying. So we'll go with an industry fence. And there we go. Nice little fence along there. I don't know that that's totally necessary, but we did it anyway. So the nice thing about this is we now have some power jumping and you can see that over here. We just need things to fill in. So in the meantime, I'm going to run a power line down here and we'll run that basically from this location straight down to our parking facility. And there we go. With power, I always love to turn anarchy off so you don't inadvertently get those pillars going through the road. Now we just need the power to jump over here and we should be good. Let's just add a temporary power line just to get things moving. And that's pretty terrible, but it will do the trick for us. So we will be happy about it. And right away, you start to see some airplanes back and all the way up and doing what they're supposed to be doing. It is a thing of beauty. I love that. That is great. But right now I want to focus a bit on our cargo facility, and this is not going to be fancy. Let's start off by placing our cargo airport terminal and I'm going to place that. Oh, I got to extend this out and I'm thinking though I don't necessarily want these to be completely connected in this particular way. I think it would be from a visual standpoint, nice to have some continuity between where this road connects and where our, uh, our road on our air, our cargo airport connects. Turning on anarchy helped me get this in place. And again, we're too far over. <laughs> <laughs> just can't just can't win with that right now. And this is going to be important for us because I want to have our cargo facility, our cargo rail facility right across from here. So we'll just pop through into our transport menu and grab that. And I want to center that as best as I can. Now we're going to make a nice connection using our create connection tool again. And honestly, the default was pretty darn good. We're going to convert this road. I've, it's always bugged me that they have asphalt roads in front of this and we don't have to do that. So we won't. We're going to also connect this road into this facility. And I'm thinking that we are going to add some sort of toll in this general location. But I see this. This is driving me nuts. There we go. Looking good. So let's add a toll right about here to keep the ruffians out of our cargo facility. So we got our tool way toll right there and we'll connect this right up and this will be a nice natural transition place anyway for us to convert over to our concrete roads and we're going to call a little bit of a mulligan right here. I'm going to take this back and we'll connect this using our road guidelines to the road right in front of this facility. Now I'm going to tell you one thing that really bugs me about this asset and maybe you didn't notice it and now I'm going to show you and it's going to drive you crazy too is this isn't even, it's not even in there. Look at this. Why is one side wider than the other? I don't understand. I don't get it, but it is. And we're going to try to, I'm going to try not to lose my mind on this. So I'm going to need to just not let perfect be the enemy of good, deal with a little bit of imperfection. It'll be better than it was. And then we'll connect this up again. We'll have to shrink this up. And in my mind, that looks pretty darn good. So now we can have some of our cargo stands off from here. So we'll add maybe four through here and then the exact same treatment. We're going to steal that road and just connect it directly in here. And it's looking very clean. 
So now we can sell back some of the soil, extend this out just a ways, and then we'll connect up some key walls and do a bit of detailing. We'll hit the corners up with node controller and I basically want nice sharp edges to make it seem like maybe a, a nice cement wall and not that weird curvy stuff that we normally get. And there we go. Nice sharp edges. We've just got to clean up the outside, which is just going to be as simple as giving some of the soil back. We'll go in with a full brush strength and take our brush size down. And now we want to connect up our final connection. Totally forgot about this, I will be honest. And we're gonna pull this straight to here and then again, use our lovely curved connection tool to make this happen. This would have been easier before the key wall. So that is one of the considerations uh, for timing. You'd, you'd probably wanna do this before your key, if at all possible. And there we go. I think that we're in a pretty good place with all of this. We've just got to really touch up some things around the edges. So those things are things like this where I intended to loop this back around and we never got to it. All right, so this is the solution I came up with and I'll give you a couple of explanations as to why. So I'd love to go with a bus only road through here, but if I do that, it loops back onto itself. It looks really crazy. It doesn't actually connect up to this road. So basically the buses can come through here then they'll loop back around and go straight out. And I'm not sure what that is. Extra node, we'll get rid of that. And that looks very, very good. I want to take a look at this to see how we are loading up on, on passengers and we're actually not doing too bad. Not a very attractive airport. And I think that it's pretty plain to see why it's a it's basically as bare bones as possible. I'm kind of OK with that. But generally, I think that from a decorating standpoint, we're going to keep it fairly sparse through here. So I'm going to add in a few things. So some airline lounges, maybe you're able to take a look over here, check things out. One of the nice things is with move it, we're able to reset these. If we want to get the right color, we just hit go into here, reset the objects. And there we go. They're both blue. So that looks nice. Let's fill in some of this pavement, though, that I do want to get right. And there we go. Nothing too crazy around here, but I think we're starting to move in a good direction. I want to focus on an issue that we're having with crime. So if we were to add a police station over here, they should go to the airport now that we've got this set up where there are multiple ways to get there, both through the passenger side and the cargo side. So this is probably the ideal location near our fire station. And I'll go with one of these newer high capacity police departments and hopefully we get coverage over the entire area over here. What I do want to do is focus on a bit of detailing and decoration. So we obviously need to have fences around here and then some landscaping along the outside to make this place really come to life. So let's do that right now. All right, we've decorated a bit, made it look a little bit nicer, just added some landscaping. And I know, I know, I'm probably going to hear it that all these trees means that there are birds over here, but we've got to make it look a little bit nicer. So we're going to take a couple of liberties here. So just some landscaping through here, a little plaza. We do have our hotel here, so we've added some trees around there. Plenty of parking and it is getting some active use. So in my opinion, this looks pretty nice. Now, there is one issue that I did notice happening as we were building this, and that is we were seeing lots of backup through here. It looks like things are resolved right now, but if we see lots of backup in the future, I'm going to add some asymmetric roads so we get some dedicated turning lanes. And truthfully, this should likely be signalized. So I'm going to do that right now 
and that'll honestly probably lead to me adding some turn lanes right off the bat. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here, even though that means that we're taking away some of our zone buildings. I think it's probably for the best and pretty crude lane marking, but I think it at least demonstrates what we're going for and it helps me see what I'm doing. And sometimes I just I just got to do it. So I think that eventually this will clear up. If things don't clear up, there are other treatments, but truthfully, not the end of the world. We'll have to let this run for a bit. I think that's what we're going to do. We'll let this run for a minute. And while we're doing that, we will have a brief city tour. While you guys were taking a look at the city tour, I was making a couple of improvements around here. I added a time traffic light right here and added a whole bunch of capacity. So we have things like dedicated right and left hand turn lanes and through lanes here where we were having a ton of backup. And as a result, things are looking pretty good. We could probably optimize this movement a little bit more, but things are clearing up pretty quickly in the area and the backups aren't too extreme. So I'm likely to not worry about it right now. And when we take a look at our traffic flow, we're sitting pretty around 81%. So it's hard to get mad at what we're seeing. Obviously, we're going to need to add some transit to the build, but I'm pretty pleased with where things are at without transit. As long as we don't mess things up in the downtown in the next one, we should be in an excellent spot to add transit and see our traffic be even better than 81%. I'm really pleased with how things are working out here. I also had to go through and do one other thing. We uh, had some nodes through here. It was creating some issues with the airport. So I did remove the nodes through here and now things are moving absolutely beautifully. The airport has tons of passengers. It's attractive-ish and uh, we are getting our cargo moving through here. So I think that this has really taken our build in a positive direction and I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.